a single-engine fighter jet hurtling down a short runway, its intake howling, the exhaust roaring like thunder. Then it leaps skywards with an almost defiant surge. Now picture that same jet being driven not by a legacy engine, but by a propulsion system born in the heart of British industrial power. When the Saab JAS-39 Gripen E-F meets a next-generation engine crafted by Rolls-Royce Holdings, the result isn't merely speed. It's a statement of aerospace sovereignty and raw power. This is the story of pure power. Today we dive deep into a pivotal moment in aerospace and defense. How the lightweight, agile Gripen fighter merges with the propulsion might of Rolls-Royce and the broader British-European industrial base. Why does this matter right now? Because fighter jets aren't just steel and avionic guts. They're industrial ecosystems, export strategies, supply chains and alliances all rolled into one. For the viewers of Military Power Play, we'll examine how a Gripen Rolls-Royce union could reshape aircraft markets, shift global power balances, and unlock real operational independence. Strap in. The Gripen was conceived with a clear set of priorities. Affordability, agility, low infrastructure footprint, and network-centric warfare. Its Delta Canard layout gives excellent short takeoff and rough strip performance, enabling rapid deployments and dispersed operations. In its latest E-F design iteration, the Gripen has grown in size, fuel capacity, sensors, and internal systems, putting it in a strong position among 4.5 generation fighters. The Swedish Air Force accepted its first Gripen E into service in October 2025. That means this is no longer just a concept, this fighter is operational, and the export pipeline is heating up. At its core, the Gripen E is powered by the American GE F414G39E afterburning turbofan. This power plant gives the aircraft a major leap over older versions, higher thrust, better climb, and improved range. But because the engine is American, it carries export control baggage, specifically under rules like ITAR, International Traffic in Arms Regulations. Simply put, Washington has a potential veto over who can receive this aircraft. Indeed, several analysts have flagged that the Gripen's dependence on a U.S. engine complicates its appeal to nations seeking maximum export freedom. Sweden has worked with its domestic engine support firm, GKN Aerospace, to localize and support maintenance of its own RM-12 and RM-16 engine variants, maintaining a degree of national sovereign capability. However, purely shifting to a non u s engine option is seen as a strategic priority. Here's where things get interesting. Sweden and its aerospace industry partners have been conducting studies with the UK and Italy on future fighter engine technology, with GKN Aerospace Sweden explicitly participating. The underlying objective, build a more autonomous European propulsion ecosystem. While there's no confirmed contract publicly announced for a Rolls-Royce engine directly replacing the F-414 in the Gripen yet, the signals are clear, the idea exists, and the work has begun. What does this mean in practice? If the Gripen were offered with a British-slash-European engine instead of an American one, many of the export restrictions and supply chain risks could be reduced. That means wider market appeal, lower geopolitical baggage, and greater operational independence. From a performance viewpoint, a Rolls-Royce engine scenario offers notable gains. Rolls-Royce defense aerospace business emphasizes high performance, reliability, long life cycle support, and industrial footprints. Coupled with the Gripen's existing agile airframe, the combination could yield higher thrust margins, better fuel consumption, longer range slash endurance, fewer sorties required and faster turnaround times. Also, putting in place a European engine would strengthen the defense industrial ecosystem. Local suppliers, maintenance, upgrade paths, all less reliant on U.S. supply chains. It also opens the door for operators who wish to avoid entanglements of third-party export reviews. This repositioning, from good fighter limited by export chains to capable fighter with global independence, is what gives the term pure power its strategic resonance. Power in this context isn't just horsepower. First, export freedom and market growth. If you remove a U.S. engine, then buyers who feared U.S. vetoes or delays might feel more comfortable. For example, Colombia's potential Gripen deal reportedly faced U.S. engine license issues. 
Second, industrial sovereignty. For Sweden, Saab and GKN, moving towards a European engine reinforces domestic capability, elevates national industrial base, and decouples critical defense capabilities from external constraints. Third, strategic flexibility. In a world of rising multipolar tensions, nations want systems that don't tie them politically to one block. A gripe and Rolls-Royce combo presents a more neutral supplier option, one that may appeal to smaller, medium-tier air forces seeking independence without exotic cost. Several recent data points illustrate the trajectory. In October 2025, Sweden accepted the first production standard Gripen E into service. At the same time, the data shows that the RM16 engine, derived from the F414, has already been run on a test rig in Sweden by GKN Aerospace. On the export front, the Royal Thai Air Force is acquiring four Gripen E-F aircraft powered by the F414G390 engine, showcasing ongoing market uptake. Meanwhile, Sweden is actively extending its engine test facility capacity in Trollhattan to support future development. The engine conversation, though, is ongoing. Discussions and feasibility studies on future fighter engine tech are live. The bottom line, the platform is real and in service, but the full re-engine strategy is still unfolding. Imagine the Gripen E-F with a Rolls-Royce derived engine. Performance would climb faster takeoffs, steeper climbs, increased fuel and weapons carry, improved mission radius. The fighter's signature low footprint operations, road base, dispersed operations, would gain stamina and reach. Cost and sustainment would benefit. Longer time between overhauls, richer local maintenance networks, greater availability. Operationally, the jet's network-centric sensors and weapons would find themselves supported by an engine that is more suited to regional logistics, less exposed to third-party export delays. For customers, that translates to a capable jet with fewer strings, strategic freedom, and a cleaner supply chain. The result? A fighter not merely upgraded, but reinvented for a new age of defense procurement, where autonomy and export flexibility matter almost as much as thrust. Of course, this vision has hurdles. Re-engineing a fighter aircraft is never simple. The airframe, fuel systems, mounts, electronics, thermal loads, and certification all need adaptation. The cost of integration may erode part of the affordability advantage that the Gripen prides itself on. Supply chain transition takes time. Operators already committed to the F-414 may face logistic disruption. Even a European engine may still contain U.S. components or export license dependencies. So full independence is elusive. Competitors aren't standing still. Jets like the Dasar Afeli, European-only engine, and lower-cost options from Russia slash China may close the gap unless the Gripen Rolls-Royce combo proves clearly superior on cost versus capability. And lastly, timing is key. In a rapidly evolving aerial combat environment with drones, hypersonics, network warfare, such an upgrade must arrive at the right time or risk being overtaken. The urgency is driven by strategic conditions. The war in Ukraine has triggered many nations to reassess fighter aircraft procurement and readiness. Countries want modern jets, but they also want them delivered soon, upgradable, without risk of external vetoes. The emergence of advanced surface-to-air missile systems, A2-AD zones, and multi-domain warfare means agile, network fighters remain relevant. At the same time, many mid-tier air forces cannot fund top-tier fifth-gen programs and are hunting for high-capability yet cost-effective solutions. The Gripen with a new heritage engine could hit that sweet spot. And with defense budgets under pressure, the balance among cost, capability, and sovereignty is shifting. An engine swap strategy now could pay big dividends in the next decade. In the best-case scenario, Saab, GKN Aerospace, and Rolls-Royce formalize the engine auction. Gripen outpaces its peers in the market for mid-tier buyers. Export deals accelerate. Sweden and Europe gain stronger footholds in fighter exports and defense industrial base. Strategic autonomy gets real. In a medium scenario, the engine option is delayed, so the aircraft continues largely with the F-414 for some time. Export growth remains moderate, but potential remains. In a worst-case scenario, the new engine never materializes, export bottlenecks remain.
competitors steal key contracts, and the Gripen program loses momentum. The pure power leap becomes a missed window. For nations watching procurement cycles now, timing and risk weigh heavily. In South Asia, where nations balance cost, regional threat, industrial aspiration, and supply chain risk, this Gripen engine story has extra resonance. A fighter platform that offers modern sensors, network capability, low infrastructure footprint, and potential engine independence could appeal to air forces seeking operational flexibility without binding alliance strings. If the Gripen evolves with a truly export-friendly propulsion option, it might shift procurement dynamics in the region, offering a credible third way between legacy platforms and major fifth-gen jets that could influence Pakistan and its neighbors when they consider future fighter replacements, upgrade cycles, logistic footprints, and local industry participation. Beyond the fighter itself, a Rolls-Royce engine option brings industrial benefits, local supply chain, maintenance ecosystems, upgrade paths, future engine derivative programs. For instance, the study Sweden is participating in with the UK and Italy on future fighter engine technology suggest that the Gripen may become a stepping stone to next generation platforms. In short, the engine is not simply a catch-up upgrade. It's a strategic investment in future capability architecture. For smaller air forces, this translates to a longer life cycle for their fleet, access to upgrades, and potentially domestic maintenance hubs rather than full dependence on foreign OEMs. From a pilot's perspective, the improved propulsion gives better energy margin, which matters in air combat maneuvers, climb counter climb exchanges, and survivability against advanced adversaries. Fuel efficiency and longer patrol times mean fewer tankers, fewer sorties, higher readiness. Rapid turnaround and lower logistic burden enable dispersed operations something the Gripen was designed for from day one. With a support ecosystem that is closer to home, if the engine is European, mission readiness for smaller air forces improves. The pure power isn't just thrust, it's time in the air, readiness on the ground, flexibility in the field. When you bring together an airframe designed for versatility and cost effectiveness, and you pair it with an engine that liberates the platform from export veto risk and supply chain fragility, you get more than the sum of the parts. You get strategic independence, operational flexibility, and a credible capability at a more modest scale. That's the promise the Gripen Rolls-Royce concept offers. A fighter that works not just for big powers, but for nations that demand agility, not just in battle, but in procurement, logistics, and politics. We've traced how the Gripen evolved, why its engine matters, the opportunity represented by a Rolls-Royce or British-slash-European engine path, and what that means technically, geopolitically, and strategically. We've looked at milestones already achieved, hurdles ahead, and what this could mean for the wider world, especially for Air Force's balancing cost, capability, and autonomy. The fusion of Gripen and a next-gen British-slash-European engine architecture could mark a turning point in fighter aircraft strategy. Not merely raw thrust, but freedom to buy, freedom to operate, freedom to export. If all aligns, pure power becomes real. Power in the air, power in the industrial base, power in geopolitics. If this exploration of aerospace engineering, strategic autonomy, and defense markets resonated with you, please hit the like button. It really helps our channel. Share this video with your friends who follow military and defense tech. And don't forget to subscribe to Military Power Play for more in-depth dives into cutting-edge weapon systems global strategy, and the platforms shaping our world. Click the notification bell so you never miss our next upload.